Happy Sunday, y'all. Boy, do we have a lot to discuss today. So this week I had two spiritual dreams. And you guys know I don't typically share dreams that I have. On rare occasion will I share. And so I had these dreams. And with each one, um, God told me that he wanted me to share them with you. And I was very shocked by this and was very hesitant. And I got on my knees and prayed and searched the scriptures. And I'm like, are you sure? And he said, yes, I need you to share both of these dreams um, in your video today. And so I thought, okay, well, here we go. So um, before I get into these dreams, I need to first explain to you what happened to me on Facebook. So it was Monday night. Um, well, actually Tuesday morning, Monday night, 2 a.m., so Tuesday morning, um, I woke up and I couldn't sleep. And so what do you do when you wake up when you can't sleep or any time that you're idle and you have nothing to do? You pick up your phone, right? That's just, we're like programmed to do that now, right? So I, I picked up my phone and I got on Facebook and all of a sudden this notification popped up that I had been restricted for three days from Facebook and I was shocked and panic set in and I thought what in the world for what why well it was quite ridiculous this is why so a friend of mine had made a post something you know kind of silly and cute something that her um son had said when he was a little boy and he was he was you know going off to college and so she found it and she was sharing it with us um, on Facebook and so I commented because uh, I thought it was hilarious and I thought, oh, I'm going to show this to my son because he's 14. And I thought, oh, yeah, stay away from girls. They're gross, right? Well, apparently on Facebook, you can't say girls are gross because that's considered hate speech. And I just thought it was absolutely ridiculous. And all of a sudden, all of this fear and panic set in. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Because they told me in the notification that, that they could delete my account, Right. And I just thought, what if, what if they delete my account and, and then I lose contact with all of my friends and, and I have no way of getting in touch with them? And what about the missionary work that I do on social media? And I just kind of freaked out, right? And so then I, I got onto Facebook Messenger and wanted to tell everybody what was going on. And so as I went to get on Facebook Messenger, then a notification had popped up and they said that they were watching me in Messenger. And that freaked me out a bit. Um, and so I sent out all of these uh, messages telling them, look at what I did. And this is ridiculous. And I was so angry and scared and frustrated. So I wanted to tell um, a lot of people, you know, in case they closed out my account. And so after I had done all that and I had been up for hours and I was just freaking out, I thought this is ridiculous. And I, and I couldn't get back to sleep. And I had to get up early the next morning to get my kids ready for school. And so I laid there staring at the ceiling, just freaked out. And I started to pray and I said, I asked Heavenly Father for peace and for guidance. And, and, you know, what do I do now? What happens now? Cause I was, I was just scared. Right. And it took me a while, but I finally was able to fall asleep. And that is when I had this dream. So in the dream, I was with my husband and my children and we were at an attraction. Okay. And there were a lot of people there. And the attraction was something about wild animals and they weren't in their cages and they were, you know, free to walk all around us. And I remember there were tigers and they were very beautiful and you could, you could pet them even. They could come up to you and I was hesitant and I was scared. I'm like, well, these are, you know, tigers. Um, and they would show their teeth and stuff. And anyways, it, it, it was very interesting. And, and so you could pet them and then you could take pictures of them. Right. And so after that, the attraction closed and me and my family began to leave and walk down this sidewalk to go to the parking lot. And um, a lot of other people were with us. They were, you know, they were all, you know, going back to their cars. And while we're walking down the sidewalk, all of a sudden I stopped. My family continued and I was like, oh no, I don't have my cell phone. Oh, oh no, this is not good. And so I thought, well... I probably left it back there, you know, at the attraction. So I'll just, I'll just probably just run back real quick and go get it. Right. So I turned around to go back to get my phone. And when I did, I noticed that all of a sudden in the distance, the path was dark 
and there was no lighting and you couldn't see the sidewalk anymore because the sun was setting and it was getting dark. And I turned around and looked ahead and my family had continued to walk, not knowing that I had stopped. And all of a sudden I couldn't see them anymore. And I stood there and I thought, what am I going to do? I, maybe I can just run back real quick. If, if I hurry and I can just go get my phone and then run and, and I can be quick and, and catch up with my family. And then I thought, but what if I, what if I can't find my phone and it's so dark back there? What if I can't find my way back? And so I knew at that moment I had to make a choice, either leave my phone and go and find my family or risk, risk getting lost in the darkness to find my phone. And so I immediately turned around and began to walk towards my family to try to find them. And then I woke up. So um, lots of things that we could talk about, discuss in this dream, but the important um, interpretation that God gave me that was very obvious was that um, I had been putting my phone um, ahead of a lot of important things. I had, my phone had become my priority and my family was not getting the attention that they needed. They were being neglected. And I, in turn, was, was neglecting myself, my own mental and physical and spiritual health because I was bound to my phone, right? So, I know. So then I woke, you know, I, I said a prayer and I had repented and I'd asked for help because it is a true addiction. I, I mean, a lot of people have the addiction to the phone, right? And I suffer from that addiction where I just, where I just grab it and pop on it and I'm looking on social media, okay? Um, so how do we get out of that bondage? You know, it's very difficult, very hard. And I noticed, you know, the next day as I was trying to get away from social media, um, I had already told all my friends about this. So, so they were responding all day long for the next couple of days. Well, what's going on now? Well, that's ridiculous. And I had, I had spread this fear and then they were fearful and they were wanting to know what was okay. I mean, some of them kind of laughed and laughed it off, you know, like it wasn't a big deal. But of other, of other people, they got really upset about it. Um, and then I had noticed that, that the next couple of days, as I tried to distance myself from the phone, I was really struggling. I, I was having a hard time because I was also, in the meantime, you know, of, of responding to these messages about my, my Facebook being deactivated, people were sending me all of these things about what was going on when people stored in the Capitol and Trump and all this other stuff. And I thought, is that true? I don't, I don't even know what's true anymore. And I would try and search it up. Is this true? Did that really happen? And, and, and it was just, I felt, um, scared and I felt a lot of confusion. Okay. Now, I'm going to get to my second dream here in a minute, and it was a bit more intense. But first, I want to read to you what Paul says, because Paul, from the New Testament, who's one of my heroes, love him, um, he saw our day, and he said something that was so perfect. It was a prophecy that was just, I mean, amazing, okay? So if we open up our Bibles to 2 Timothy, Paul says that in these last days, we will be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. Are we not ever learning? Do we not have all of these screens and gadgets? Hey, Alexa. Hey, Google. Hey, Siri. All of this knowledge right at our fingertips. But we can't find the truth. Right? And we're bound. We're in bondage to these gadgets, to these screens, to our cell phones. For what? For what purpose? We're missing out on our families. We're missing out on the opportunity to grow spiritually. I was discussing this with my husband, and he said it so perfectly when he said that our cell phones impede our progression, right? They're impeding our progression. We cannot progress mentally, physically, or spiritually when we are, when we are in bondage to our cell phones. Okay. So I want you to really think about that and think about what can you do to separate yourself from your phone? 
um, you know, set up some guidelines and ask and pray for help to, to resist the temptation to constantly get on social media because not every picture needs to be posted. You know, not every talent needs to be trending. Okay. Not every fit, funny moment needs to go on YouTube. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I'm working through my own temptations of getting on the cell phone too. Um, all right. So let's talk about the second dream that I had. I was in this house and I was surrounded by, um, my friends and family, loved ones. Okay. And we were celebrating. There was some kind of celebration or party going on. Only while I was in this room with everyone, the celebration felt awkward. It felt off, like something wasn't right. But I couldn't put my finger on it. But something felt, um, I can't explain it. Not dark, but just uncomfortable. That's a good way to explain it. It felt uncomfortable, okay? And there was all this food, like trays and trays of hors d'oeuvres and snacks. And, and I was looking at them and everyone was, was you know, feeding, feasting on these treats. And, and I got very hungry and they looked so delicious. And I began to indulge in these treats and things, right? And we're all having a good time. Even though something feels uncomfortable, something doesn't feel right. And then all of a sudden, evil walked into the room through the door. And when I saw her, I recognized her immediately for what she was. And I was terrified. And I froze in fear. And everyone else around us, we were all in fear. And then I backed away from what was going on. And I simply walked out of the other door on the far side of the room. I walked down the hallway. I didn't run. I didn't trip. I wasn't in a hurry. I just simply just walked out. And as I walked down the hallway, I opened up the front door of this house and stepped outside and there was this quiet quaint neighborhood and the skies were clear and I felt peace and then I woke up and I laid there you know kind of <laughs> pondering on this dream and it was it was very frightening and I thought oh, I escaped I escaped I don't know how I did it I didn't even run or I wasn't like fighting for my life but I escaped from from the evil and as I prayed and pondered on this dream, Heavenly Father let me know what the woman represented. This woman represented pride, adultery, envy, blasphemy, um, idolatry, all of these sins that we fall victim to as sons and daughters of God. While we're here on this earth, we're not perfect and we fall victim to these things. And what was so frightening in the dream was that this woman was getting ready to destroy all of my loved ones. And these were families, tons of little children running around in this room. It was very frightening. Um, and I just sat there pondering on that, on how we fall victim to these sins. And this world, this is a wicked, perverse world. And it is time for us to step away from all of this stuff that is impeding our progression. So um, <laughs> let's let's give some hope, right? Let's let's build us up a little bit, right? Um, I want to read in the scriptures, and I know that not everyone that watches my videos are members of my faith, but I want to share something with you from the Book of Mormon that is really powerful, okay? So, um, we're going to read about Moroni. His coat, uh, and he took a piece thereof and wrote upon it, in memory of our God, our religion, and freedom, and our peace, our wives, and our children. And he fastened it upon the end of a pole. And he fastened it on his headplate, and his breastplate, and his shields, and girded on his armor about his loins. And he took the pole, which had which had on the end thereof his rent coat, and he called it the title of liberty. And he bowed himself to the earth, and he prayed mightily unto his God for the blessings of liberty to rest upon his brethren, so long as there should a band of Christians remain to possess the land. 
I love this. It is so powerful. And this is who we are. We are that band of Christians and we still possess this land. And yes, there is wickedness and turmoil and chaos all around us. We're ever searching for knowledge and it's hard to find it. But we know where the truth lies, right? The real knowledge, the real truth is in our scriptures right here. It is not here. So with these two dreams, we learned that we need to put down our screens, okay? Put down our screens. Don't cause contention. Don't fight. What are you spreading on, on your social media, okay? Are you spreading goodness, peace, and love, and kindness, okay? This is what we need to concentrate on. We need to be a light. Christ was a light. We need to be a light for him. And I know that we can do it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.